very much, um, Bridget, and ladies and gentlemen, it has been pointed out to you that I'm not Brendan Howland. I'm very glad that that's been done in advance, uh, so that if you do have any difficulty with anything that I have to say, you'll have to take it up with me and not with Brendan. Um, I'm not, and I, I feel it also necessary for me to uh, uh, point out that I don't have a speech given to me by Brendan Howland this afternoon. Um, he has not corrected my homework. This is entirely my own work, and as I say, I'm delighted to have an opportunity to be here and to contribute to uh, this really crucial debate. And I thank John Mulholland and his colleagues for inviting me here. I also look forward um, as an, a member, somebody who has been appointed, uh, nominated I should say, by uh, Eamon Gilmore to the uh, Constitutional Convention, I very much look forward to the commencement of that work in the autumn. I regard the Constitutional Convention as one element, uh, a central element I hope, uh, of a dynamic process of reform to reinvigorate uh, our governance and our democratic institutions. Now, there has been debate, uh, some quite vigorous debate, about how broad the agenda is uh, for the Convention, and that presumably is one of the reasons why the topic is before us this evening. I want to address that issue, uh, but before I do it, uh, because I believe that the agenda in truth is quite broad, certainly is potentially very broad, but before I come to that, I think it's necessary just to, 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 to make one or two points about the concept of reform generally and the prospects for reform in our country. Uh, not all of the constitutional reform, first of all, that, the, that is being contemplated is to be encompassed in the Constitutional Convention. That's already been pointed out, I think, by Dunica. There is a proposal for uh, a children's uh, referendum to be brought forward, a referendum in relation to Shannon Dern, and one or two other uh, proposals that were announced last week in relation to reorganization of the courts and a possible change to the operation of Article 26 of the Constitution in relation to the reference of a bill by the President to the Supreme Court to, to uh, adjudicate on its constitutionality. But more importantly even than that, it's really, I think it's vital, and I do agree with, with Dan on this, when we, we have this, we get drawn into this discussion about the culture, and we tear our hair out, how can we change our culture? But when we come down to actually looking at how we bring about change, it does come down to institutions. It does come down to specific, if we're talking about the Constitution, specific provisions in the Constitution. And it can also be delivered through changes in our laws, other than changes in the Constitution. And a lot of work has already begun, and I know reforms were made in the past by way of legislation, they weren't, uh, uh, it seems to me, um, uh, extensive enough, and we've been able to return to that even in the last year, uh, year and a half of the life of this government. When we talk about the relationship between the Doyle and the executive, I think that is a crucially important issue and one that you know, has, to be, has to be addressed. But we can do an awful lot about that short of constitutional change. We can actually ensure that the parliament works in the way a parliament should work. There are steps we can take, rather than just wishing it to be so, there are steps that we can take to make it so. One or two very brief examples. At the moment, uh, in the last six months, take two pieces of legislation. One, the whistleblowers provision to uh, protect whistleblowers, so-called whistleblowers. That is a, a, a proposal coming from government in the first place, I grant, but has gone through a committee, which I'm uh, honored to be the, chair, the chairman of, the Finance Committee, a pre-legislative process where the, the, we've called in witnesses, we've had hearings in relation to what that law should contain, and we report to the minister. The same with the insolvency legislation. That has actually been put through, maybe not as, as rigorous a parliamentary uh, 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 process as we would like to see, but certainly it has been put through that process. Over a period of weeks, parliamentarians engaging in discussion about what that legislation should contain, not leaving it confined entirely to the government as has been the position in the past. Other areas of reform can happen, as I said already, through legislation. Political donations, all, everybody says, all of, the ref, all of the tribunals, everybody says we have got to address the issue of political funding. It is being addressed and it has been addressed. Anti-corruption legislation, robust anti-corruption legislation was introduced by the government, uh, 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 or published by the government uh, last week or the week before. The question of the participation of women in politics, we're constantly, correctly arguing that that needs to actually be given a push Again, this point about culture, that culture will not change unless it's made to change. We have brought in legislation to ensure that it will change. We had problems, we had disagreements, we had fights about it. Should you penalize a political party for not having 30% of its candidates, uh, as wi uh, uh, women as 30% of their candidates? We've done that. You know, so we've actually brought about a change. Freedom of information legislation, vital in any society for any proper governments. We've restored, or we intend to restore, I should say, the government intends to restore some of the reverses uh, that, that were made in that over the years. Local government, I'm delighted you're discussing local government tomorrow. 
that is at the heart, it seems to me, of the kind of reform that we need. And I agree with, with, your, with, with, with your director earlier on. Absolutely at the heart of, of uh, uh, restoring or returning uh, a stake in our community and a stake, good evening, in our society and a stake in how our country is run to people, to the citizens, not just the ordinary citizens, I agree with Bridget, to all of us, all citizens. Reform of local government does not require us to change the constitution. Uh, there are other reforms that we should consider and implement as well. Um, better education for citizenship, some education for citizenship even, dare I say it, and real efforts to involve citizens, not just at voting time, uh, uh, but on, on a continuing basis in the democratic life of their country. And that was one of the valuable insights, it seems to me, and contributions of groups like Claiming the Future and We the Citizens who, who brought forward some of those ideas. And I would hope, ladies and gentlemen, that the very existence of the Convention, the very existence of the Convention, will help encourage real uh, democratic engagement and participation of citizens on a permanent basis in the life of their country and not just post post-crisis. So that's why I say that the Constitutional Convention is one element, uh, a vital element, but one element of a dynamic process of reform that we need to reinvigorate um, our democratic institutions. Now, in the wake of the economic crisis, there were many calls, quite rightly, for reform and change, even for what some people said we needed a new republic. And much of this clamour of, for change is entirely justified. The citizens of this country have witnessed and are experiencing the most traumatic economic crisis since the state was formed. Alongside this, there was a near collapse of public trust in the very ability of the state and its institutions to cope with the challenges with which uh, they have been faced. It's an awesome context for us. Not, when I say us, I don't mean just politicians. For us as a community and as a society. And we, we, you know, we recognize the necessity for change, but we then have to break it down. We know we need change, some change, perhaps fundamental change, but we have to get to the stage, and I think we're there now, of asking what precise change? What do we want to change? When we refer to our constitution, what needs to change in it? No use us saying that document, you know, it didn't serve us well, we better look at the whole thing and start all up. That's no use. We now must sit down and get, start getting real and start getting specific. What are the steps? What are the provisions or laws in here that, we, that, that are in here that we, need to that we need to change or that are not in here we need to put in, which would guard against the recurrence of failure, against future uh, abuses of power, against political corruption, incompetence, economic mismanagement? Dan has pointed to one that he has proposed in a very engaging way, which would require a change to the Constitution for the reasons that he has explained. That's what I mean. I think that's incumbent on us to get in, to drill in here and see what it is we want, we want uh, to change. Much has been said and written about, this, about the Constitution. Many people believe, as I do, and I want to say this very clearly, that it is an impressive uh, and enduring document. It's suffused, for the most part, in my view, with vibrant, yes, vibrant democratic principles. It sets out the basic institutional framework of our state. But when we say, I make this point again, when we say that it's let us down or that its weaknesses have contributed to our current plight, we, it's incumbent, as I say, for us to specify which structures and which problems, uh, which, which aspects are problematic and what we, want, what we want to change. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we can't conjure a perfect economic, political, or, or democratic dispensation by constitutional fiat. We can't do that. It isn't possible for us to do that. It's still less can we sort of deal with our problems by announcing in some way a second republic. You know, it requires us, as I said, to get in and drill. I'm reminded of something that the late uh, British historian Tony Judd observed in his anthem for social democracy, uh, his book, Ill Fares the Land. And he said, and I quote, you cannot institutionalize trust. Once corroded, it is virtually impossible to restore. It needs care and nurturing by the community, the collectivity. So what we need is a careful, deliberative process which takes us uh, towards that end. Now the agenda for the Constitution itself, which I know there's controversy about, and, and, and um, disappointment about, which I, I, I understand. I want to say, first of all, that it needs to be acknowledged and understood because it wasn't, uh, when, when somebody was talking about the, the, the announcements by the government and so on, uh, somebody forgot, it seems to me, to, to make it clear when the resolution was being passed and, of course, blame the government. Well, we might, we should blame the government. We blame them for, everybody, for everything else. But it should be clear to people that, yes, there are eight issues on the agenda, but it is also provided for in the resolution, which I have in front of me. 
uh, that once those eight issues have been gone through, and don't forget the two that people are so dismissive of, votes at 17, which by the way, a lot of people are not as dismissive as some as commentators are, and the question of the term of office of the president, which also I think is a subject that deserves some debate, not very lengthy debate perhaps, but those two issues are to be disposed of in two months. So let's not fall into the trap of saying, oh, it's going to be bogged down in issues that are not of great importance. It won't. And it then says that once the eight issues have been disposed of, that following, and I'm quoting, following completion of the uh, above reports, such other relevant constitutional amendments that may be recommended by it, by the convention. So there is a power there written into the resolution acknowledged by the Taoiseach and the Taoiseach uh, uh, in, in the Dáil and the Senate that, that the, the, the convention can, as it were, extend its own, extend its remit uh, in, relation to, in relation to this. And the issues, people say the, the topics aren't weighty. I really just respectfully disagree with that. How can anybody say that the electoral system to the Dáil is not a critical question? That's in the, on the list. Uh, people, you know, the argument has been, we know the argument for, 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 for a long time, that the system we have militates against a parliament that is perhaps more strategic, one that's focused on broad economic policy uh, and oversight, and something that we really badly need. And I agree with Dan on the, the points that he's made here and elsewhere on this need for strategic thinking and strategic expertise on the part of the parliament. So that's one issue that is, is on the agenda. Right slap bang on the agenda, let there be no doubt about it, and I think that will, motive, will, 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 will allow for, 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 for uh, considerable debate. Um, and by the way, if you are in, form, in, in, in favour of, which I am, I state that clearly, of uh, uh, change to the electoral system for the Dáil, and I'm very much in favour of that, you can be sure of one thing, you will not achieve electoral reform to the Dáil in Leinster House. Leinster House will never deliver that. And that one of the great opportunities for this uh, convention is that it opens it up to, to, to uh, uh, pe people other than the, uh, as it were, the political elites. Provision for same-sex marriage is on the list. I mean, how can anybody say that this is not a weighty or an important question? It opens up debate on Article 41 of the Constitution, the family clauses, in addition to it being a hugely important issue uh, in, in its own right. The place of women in the home. For years, when I was reading about these things when I was studying, the place that this, the article 4122, 40, mothers shall not be obliged by economic necessity to engage in labour to neglect of their duties in the home. That's on the list for discussion uh, as, an, as an issue that should be considered. So, and by the way, both of those, que that question of the, pl uh, the place of women in the home and the presidency, they were issues, uh, uh, interestingly enough, that were, were hugely important back in, the in, in 1937. When you look at what were the issues that people were talking about broadly when the Constitution was introduced, they were actually the two most prominent issues, uh, as is actually clear from, from uh, Jared Hogan's uh, um, uh, book on the, the, the making of the Constitution or the, the basic draft documents which is about to be published by the, by the Royal Irish Academy. I know I, 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 should, I should conclude um, and I, I, can I do so by saying this? I wouldn't mind maybe engaging on the issue of the socio-economic rights point but I'll, I'll, I'll maybe wait to see if that comes up in the discussion. I just strongly urge you, can I just leave, leave you with this? Look to what can be achieved by this really strikingly innovative and progressive initiative in my opinion. Rather than carping or we'll say, and I don't denigrate people who complain about the fact that it doesn't go as far as they would like to do it, but let's just, it's been adopted now. Let's give this thing our very best shot. Let's look at what's on the list, what can be added to the list, rather than what's not on the list. And I can't imagine how anyone can argue at this stage that it shouldn't be given, it shouldn't be a fair wind. And I cannot imagine either that the government, any government, would or could ignore the recommendations from such an important body. Uh, you know, I think it's, it's a huge opportunity. I believe it's well, well worthy of all our support, and I, re I, 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 and I certainly will do everything I can to contribute to its success in whatever small way I can. Thank you very much.